Jed Webb along with Ricky the Dragon Steamboat and what an exciting night we've got planned for you this evening. Last week on this show, Viper came up here and challenged War Eagle Chris Chavis to a match. He said he wanted to get some competition. Little did he know that the promoters were standing right outside saying, you want it, you got it. Force them to sign. We're going to see a great matchup today, Ricky, as well as some other stars. It's going to be real good this evening. You know something, Ted? It's a pleasure to be on here with you. I was with you, oh, I think... Three weeks ago. Three weeks ago, and uh, I had asked you to talk to the promotion. I'd like to be on here one more time with well, you. It's I hope my I, pleasure. I hope I can give you a hand in this one hour. I'd like to say hello to a lot of good wrestling fans all around the country. Jim and Margaret McDonald's from MSI Service their daughters, lovely people, Amy and Jamie, and all the fans all across the country, and especially around the Carolinas, they're going to really enjoy the show. Well, we're going to have some exciting action for you tonight, starting right now. Let's turn it over to our ring announcer, Billy Powell. Thank you, and good evening. Our first match from Mobile, Alabama, weighing 220 pounds, Buddy Blondes, and his tag team partner from Chicago, Illinois, 265 pounds, Mike Wallace. Their opponents in this tag team match from Kansas City, weighing 245 pounds, Cowboy Bob Orton, his partner from Watts, LA, 320 pounds, Baron Samidi. Well, the Baron and Cowboy Bob Orton in action in this match, an Australian tag team match against Buddy Blondes and Mike Wallace, and I can tell you right off the bat, Ricky, that Blondes and Wallace have their work cut out for them. They certainly do. You know, I've wrestled Bob Orton on several uh, occasions during the t uh, past time of my career, and he's a wrestler's wrestler. He's got a great amateur background, I believe Missouri State champion. Florida State champion three years in a row. Three years in a row. And, uh, but this Baron Samiti guy, this guy scares me, Ted. This guy scares me. Big, yeah. huge, gets on television and admits to everyone that they just love to hurt people. Yeah, they're not, they're not just here to, to win, they're here to hurt people. They, they don't care if they win or lose, they really don't. Qualify. They sure. want to go out there and make a point and hurt people. Mike Wallace into the ring against Baron Samidi, the man who's got at least $18,000 worth of tattoos on his chest and arms. Samidi, if you look at the eyes, he's, he's got the eye of the tiger, collar and elbow. Trying to pull him into that red zone, into the corner. Referee Ron West is calling for the break, and Samidi, Samidi protecting himself. You know something, Ted, over the years of, uh, of wrestling, you run into a few guys like the Samidi character. Get on television, admit they like to hurt people hurt people on TV time and time again. But I believe in karma. I believe in what goes around and comes around because I've seen it happen over the years. Tenfold, you know? Tenfold. Guys that were big and bad dudes, but then you hear about them down the road. So-and-so got busted up bad, got hurt bad. Wallace and Samidi into the corner. Referee calling for the break, and Wallace with a clean break. You know, this is an odd tag team combination. You got Bob Orton well-schooled in wrestling, coming from a wrestling family background, his father, Bob Orton Sr., and then tag-teaming with a character like Samidi. It's, it's a weird combination. Samidi, who grew up in the watch section of Los Angeles, Ricky, and grew up an angry young man, and he's, he's never forgotten. They say that you could tell the banker from the bank robber by the time they're six years of age, and uh, this kid's juvenile police record is something that... Uh, you know, there's no surprise that he's the way he is today. He isn't going to the bank and making deposits. He's making withdrawals. You got it. That's it. You got it. Boot to the midsection, and Wallace gets the full thrust of that 300 pounds coming down on the back of the head. Samidi looking at Orton. Look at the smiles. They like this. you got to be on your guard at, at, at all times with you, wrestling with a character like Samidi. Nice elbow to the throat. Samidi checking around, challenging Buddy Blondes to come into the ring. Going back to work on Mike Wallace right now. I don't even like the boots that Samidi's wearing. No, he... No. Uh, Got them SS type boots. I'll tell you what, those are not standard wrestling boots. They don't look to me. The types that I've seen many occasions get steel tips in the toes. Oh, oh. 300 plus, plus pounds. Right on the chest, and Baron Samidi smiling, enjoying his day's work at the office. Into the turnbuckle. Bob Orton making the tag. Orton into the ring. Samidi holding Wallace. And Orton says, Let me out. Boom! Right across the face. Popping him right into the eye. You can hear that from here, Ricky. 
Beal across the ring, coming down, adding his own body weight to it. And going Grabbing to work on the head. Yeah, that's, that's right. that wrestling background that's you talk right. about. Grab a hold. They say you control the head, the body will follow. That's true. Squeeze the head and the body will go out. No doubt about it. And you can see that uh, arm right there applying pressure on the throat, which cuts off the amount of circulation of blood and oxygen going to the brain. That's true. And he who does not have oxygen in the cocoa does not think straight. <laughs> Mike Wallace right now in trouble. Samidi making the tag, entering the ring. Notice that Orton does not relinquish the hold until Samidi is well in place. This is a fluid team. And there is Orton occupying the referee, Ron Wes, while Samidi goes back to work. Samidi throw over there almost intentionally, like, here, tag yeah, out with yeah. your body. I want some of him. Boom, firing away one straight to the chest. Wallace right now would do well to make the tag while Samidi is occupied. And he does make the tag. Buddy Blondes in the white trunks, blue trim in the ring. Squaring off with Samidi and catching a knee to the groin. I'll tell you, the young kid's got a lot of guts to get in the ring with Samidi. He certainly does. Samidi holding him up like a bag of pants with a suit playing. Oh, looks like about square 10 feet up in the air. On that oh, one. Right on the square of the back. And Blondes is holding that back right now. He's stunned. Look at Samidi. Look at that look. Look at that look. He loves what he's doing. The pressure of being applied. And, and those wristbands, I don't know how they can allow him to get into the ring with those wristbands right now. He's using that as a weapon, right? It, it looks like it could be controversial. You've got some steel star studs on there. I'll tell you what, this time I'd like to see the organization, the North American Wrestling Association, go in there and outlaw this type of garb going into the ring. Hey, I understand, Ted, that there's going to be a wrestling tag team tournament. That is what we have been told, Ricky. Yes. Oh. Characters like Samidi and Orton would be in the running for the championship, don't you think? No doubt about it. No doubt about it. In fact, uh, Bob Orton alluded to that last week, saying that uh, they don't really care about these matches, whether they win or lose. They said when the tournament starts and the, the straps are on the line, then they'll concentrate on winning matches right now. Well, I'll tell you something, Ted. These matches right now could be a warm-up, a tune-up for these two guys, Orton and Samidi. And uh, a big psych job to everybody else that's watching. And they're, they're getting up telling everybody on television. They don't care if they get disqualified. They don't care if they win. But I'll bet you when the cards are laid down on the table and the, everything's on the line, that they'll be out there to win. No doubt about it. I think right now all they're trying to do is send a message. And I'll tell you who's getting the best message right now. Buddy Blondes, that foot up on the ropes, referee calling for the break. Mm. Ronnie West is going to have his work cut out today. Orton, relentless. Snapmare. Is he going to snapmare him? He's trying to snapmare him. No, he's, he's not. Putting a twist on the head, going back to trying to cut off the blood and oxygen supply to the head, squeezing around the neck. And the tag is made with a fresh Baron Samidi. I'll tell you something, Ted. I don't know, buddy. Blonde. Mm. It looks like to me that maybe he's got to get in the gym and work out a little bit and put on a few pounds to go up against the characters of these two guys. No doubt about it, Ricky. Uh, you know, you, you can say that he's not only giving up the uh, the uh, size and, and the experience and the weight, and the weight yeah. but, I mean, the guy right now does not have a chance to exhibit the speed advantage that he would have. Ooh, big size, what, 13, 14? Big size, size, 14. He can water ski in those babies. Get up! Planting him on the side of the face, Buddy Blind, and he's and he's taunting him. Get up, get up. Got him up for that side. That side, would you call this like a side souffle? Exactly, exactly. Side souffle, hooking that leg. Oh, Wait a minute, Orton. I, hey, I, I don't agree with that. No, I don't either. I don't. Orton saying, make the tag. I want to, I want to be the guy that goes into the man the right there. One, two, three, end of the match. See, Ricky, this is where injury, permanent injury, comes into play in sure. professional wrestling. Orton. Orton, we've seen this before. He's going to get him up for that super souffle. Popping him in the forehead once. Back up there, grabbing the trucks. I want you to notice how high up Orton lifts him up on the superplex. They're getting up so high, they get the nosebleed. Oh, my Lord. One, two, three. Okay. Buddy Blondes is a whip man. No a whip man. It. The winners of this match, Bob Orton Jr., Samidi, the soul taker, and Buddy Blinds is hurt. The referee, Ron West, and his partner, Mike Wallace, are tending to him right there. You know something, Ted? I don't know if I could sit here and talk and commentate if after that suplex such as that, that Orton would just pick him up, pick him up by the hair. Let's look at it on instant replay, Ricky. Slow here we go. Well, you're standing up on the second rope, which is about four feet higher than you normally would be. Lifting man way up over the air. The momentum carrying you down. Watch
Hachi coming down very close to the back of the shoulder blades and the top of the in the back of the head. And I'm, glad, and I'm glad that Orton beat him for the count of three. No doubt, because I don't know if I can sit here and, and tolerate it. This did not have to go any further than that. Coming up next on the North American Wrestling Association, the challenge match that you've all been waiting for. The Viper and Chris Nolan weighing 235 pounds. The one they call the Viper. His opponent from Lumberton, North Carolina, 272 pounds, the War Eagle, Chris Chavis. I tell you what, it's been a while since we've had a North, uh, or an actually a Native American superstar like this kid's going to be. War Eagle, Chris Chavis. You're reading a lot about him. You're seeing him in action. He made his debut on the North American Wrestling Association. Ricky Steamboat, this guy looks like he's got stardom in front of him. He's a big guy, 272 pounds, very agile for his height and weight. The Viper making the challenge here last week is going to have his hands full this evening. No well, I'll, doubt tell you about what, it. I'll tell you what, uh, the Viper turned on his partner Mike Rex last week on the show, much to uh, the chagrin of the fans watching the show here. And, uh, you know, uh, you hate to see a guy turn on his partner. And then all of a sudden interrupted an interview with War Eagle saying, I want some of you, buddy. And I guess uh, I guess that uh, the promoter said, OK, this would be a great matchup and had the contracts ready before the show was over. You know, something as, as quick as this would be very interesting. I, you know, you look. You look at the two men, you try to size them up, and I would have to say that the uh, War Eagles got an advantage, obviously, and in, in, in maybe in height, weight, and strength. I've watched both of them wrestle, and I'd have to give the edge to the Viper for wrestling knowledge. Well, he's got the, you know, he's got this international experience. Yeah. People have seen him. Right? Hey, want to test strength? Want to test strength? Not with War Eagle, you don't. Well, I'll tell you something, Ted. This is not a bad idea for the Viper. Let's see how strong this guy really is. He looks big, he's impressive looking. Let's see how strong he really is. The Viper has some international experience, Rick. I think that the, everyone has come to that conclusion after watching the uh, holes that he applies from time to time, including that python. We've seen him apply the python yes, to several sir. people, and that's something that uh, most folks learn in the Orient. That's true, and it's, and it's a hole that's not used uh, very much in the North American continent. Nice arm drag takedown, but I refusing to relinquish the hole was War Eagle. I haven't seen the python hold used in Canada or around the States. And you're right about it. Um, I believe it uh, originating in the Orient. No doubt about it. Uh, the name that comes to mind is the fantastic uh, uh, Toro uh, T Tanaka, Professor Tanaka, yeah. who utilized that hold years ago. Into the turnbuckle goes the Chief, followed by the Python. The Python is hurt. Arm drag takedown. Another arm drag takedown. This crowd getting into it right now as the Viper goes outside of the ring. He says, wait a minute. Nursing that shoulder right now and receiving some talking from the fans. You know what that's been It shows a little bit of experience he's lacking right there in the fact that the War Eagles are expressing a lot of strength, but you got to hang on to the arm. Yes, you do. You, the arm drag is only as good as if you can hang on to it. That's a fact. That's a fact from a man that applies that arm drag takedown better than anyone I've ever seen. Ricky oh. the Dragon Steamboat. Thanks, Ted. Our partner I've had here some tonight. Good teachers. Well, we had some good teachers. Teachers may be good, but you yeah. certainly have mastered that. Coming down on the shoulder, applying the pressure to Viper. It's a big kid, War Eagle. Look at those shoulders, Ricky. Look at the size of the legs. Awesome. Yes. There's a lot of speculation as to who the Viper may be, Ricky. We've had people take guess. I mean, the guess vary. I mean, I have no idea, do you? No, I don't. You know, I, I try to look at him. I've, uh, I've looked at his, at his body, and I don't recognize it. I've been around. Too. I've, been around, I've been around the horn a few times. Right? I was going to say, if anybody would have a good hunch, it would have to be you. You travel to all four corners of the world and back. Now well, he's trying to shake the cowboy off. New Zealand, Europe, Canada many times, Japan on a dozen different tours. I did my taxes one time, and I filed for three different countries in 44 different states. <laughs> <laughs> I was busy that year. Keep your accountant busy, yes, too. I'll sir. tell you, you're an accountant's nightmare. Referee Byron Richard counting. Viper beating the count, getting back into the ring. I'll tell you something, it's good to get out though. You learn a lot. You go over to the Orient, you go to Australia, New Zealand. Everybody has their own style. 
You learn to, learn to appreciate the good old U.S. of A, though, my friend. Oh, it's nice to get back. Firing away with a right to the head, and War Eagle is down. Byron Richard cautioning the Viper. Viper wasting no time and following up on those with some boots to the head, but War Eagle trying to come back, trying to turn the time right now. Viper working on that left arm. You know, Viper has displayed some good wrestling ability as well. Going back to that arm, working on that arm. That is the strategy. Find one part that you consider the weak middle and chase it. And he is chasing it now. Firing away on the shoulder and forearm. Applying the pressure into the canvas. This serves two purposes. This applies pressure on War Eagle and this gives the Viper a breather. A much needed breather. He's taken some punishment today. And, and the bottom man is continually burning energy trying to get out of the hole. No doubt. Yes. No doubt. Dual purpose. Stepping on that arm right now. Coming down on the back of that shoulder. Planting those big sizes. Well, you know, I was talking with Big John Studd a couple of months. Well, it was about a month ago, and he was telling me that he lost his bursal sack on a maneuver like that. He said that, uh, that he suffered a great shoulder injury. And to this day, he says his shoulder suffers some weakness from it. Uh, uh, shoulder injuries, lower back injuries, elbows, knees. You know, we're not out there in the ring. We don't wear a bunch of shoulder pads or knee pads. Or, certainly don't, you know, babe. Helmets. No, sir. No helmets, no pads. It's uh, pure skin and bone against skin and bone. And those injuries go with the territory. Hey. Most of the time, the guys run around the birthday suit. Or darn near it. That's right. Continues to apply that pressure on that left shoulder. Into the ropes. Nice. Nice hit flip. Quick thinking. Quick thinking on the yes, part sir. of the Viper. This one could have belonged to War Eagle. If you just joined us, this match is a result of a special challenge made last week by the Viper right here on the North American Wrestling Association. He came out here in the middle of War Eagle's interview and stole the show, basically. War Eagle very unhappy about that. That's any, any time that you get on the wrong side of an Indian, you're, you're in can, trouble, you baby. can expect a battle. You're in trouble. He not only could get a scalp, but a mask here this evening. I tell you, the folks on hand and those watching at home would not, love nothing more than to find out who lies behind like that mask. Right. We'd all like to find out who lies behind that mask. What makes a wrestler wear a mask, Ricky? You know something? Nice souffle from Oregon. It can be used as a distraction. You're, every time that you're out there in the ring wrestling against that guy, you're wondering who you're wrestling. Inside souffle, hooking the leg, one, two, and powering out is the Viper. Some, some people speculate he may be wearing a mask because he may have done damage to somebody in some territory and uh, is afraid of uh, retribution. Well, that, that could be very powerful. Nice chop. Tomahawk chop, catching him coming off the ropes. But I can't see that. You know, if, 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 if this guy's been around the United States. I'm sure he, there he is. He's going, going for the mask. He's, He's got, got a mask. He's got it all. He's got the mask. Look at that guy. He has got the mask. And he's got him in that full motion. Well, if we could only get a look at that face right now. Here he is. Do you recognize that I face? Don't, I don't. No, I don't. He must... He's going into his ward and hey, oh, 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 over the head. And I wish I could tell you who the viper is. The mask is off, but I haven't been able to get a good look at that face. He has chopped him again. I wish we could get a close-up on that face there. How about Brad? Brad Anderson. Anderson. That is Brad Anderson. Would you, know, would you know who his father is? I would say right now that that's the legendary Gene Anderson. You got it. My got Lord, it. I'll tell you what. We knew that this kid had some wrestling in his and background. And who was Gene Anderson? Part of the wrecking crew. crew. Part go. of the wrecking crew. The famous Anderson wrestling fan. That right. is him. That is Brad Anderson. There is no mistake about it. The referee is calling for the bell as Anderson is leaving the ring. He wanted no more of War Eagle, and the referee Byron, Rich Byron Richard is a, 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 he has awarded this match to Chief War Eagle. You know something that looks as though that the Indian did get his scalp this evening. Well, he certainly did. Chris War Eagle is the winner of this match because the Viper, who uh, appears to be.
after Brad Anderson has been counted out. Let's look at this on slow motion instant replay. Ricky, give us the, the details here. Well, it, it, the War Eagle right now being on the war path, doing his war dance, got Brad Anderson, that's who we found out to be, by the hair, big tomahawk chop, tomahawk chop to the back of the head, solid blow. You Boy, that was, that. knocked yes, him sir. off his feet right that's there. That's right. There you see him leaving the ring now. I think. We're gonna, he's gonna throw him into the ropes, come off with a big chop to the chest, knocking the air out of you, boom, Boy, down I he goes. I tell you, that's as pretty as you're gonna see as that's far right. as tomahawk chocks are concerned. And that it is, the winner of the match because he got got it out. Coming up next, an interview with Cowboy Bob Orton and mm. Baron Samidi. Don't go away, this You'll is the North American. You'll have to by yourself. I will, this is the North American Wrestling Association. In the professional wrestling, uh, the main object is to win. I've got two fellows here with me right now who have expressed already that winning is secondary. The main thing is to hurt people. Uh, Bob Orton, uh, one of the things that upset the fans, and uh, frankly myself, oh, wow. was uh, was the fact that Baron Samidi had Buddy Blondes beaten, and, and you begged him not to pin him, that you wanted the joy of going in there. And, uh, you know, th th this this goes beyond the uh, the, the bounds of, of tolerability here. See, we happen to be two fortunate people. You know, I, I know there's a lot of people out there, all you southern hicks sit around. You've got to get up in the morning and go to work, and it's just so miserable, so hard for you. We're looking at two people who love their jobs. You've seen us for the last month out here humiliating people, defeating people, making people look really, really bad. Now, let me ask you a question, short stuff. Let me ask you this. Who have you seen around here who has a chance against the Baron and myself? Well, I don't have to think uh, long to tell you that I think the American Bulldogs uh, are a great combination. Bo Reagan and Sam Houston. Bo Reagan and Sam Houston. I think Ricky the Dragon and Steamboat and maybe Big John Studd. I think that would be a workable if combination. John Studd and Ricky Steamboat wanted any part of us, they'd be right here ready for us right now, Daddy. The fact of the matter is they're not. And you know why? Because who wants to step in the ring with this much talent and this much devastation? I got one thing to say, Big John Studd. You've been running around and ducking me way too long. I am going to be the first man to pick you up over my head, and I'm going to drop you roll flat on your back. Right there, baby. You better believe it. <laughs> well, like them or not, uh, we're going to be dealing with them for a long, long time here in the North American Wrestling Association. Bob Orton Jr. and Baron Samiti right now. Let's go back to the ring for more action in Billy Powell. Okay. Okay. Oh. ...with a tag team match and from parts unknown. Here is the Iron Man. The other part of this 480-pound combination is from Columbia, South Carolina, Butch Malone. Their opponents with a combined weight of five. Certainly uh, one of the top con uh, contenders for that North American uh, Wrestling Association Tag Team Championship. You know, without a doubt, you look at the American Bulldog, and I've been around uh, the different federations. They remind me of the British Bulldog. No Davey, doubt. Davy Boy Smith and Dynamite Kid. No doubt yeah. about it. They build are familiar, are, are very similar, and, and uh, the wrestling style also. Collar and elbow, Butch Malone in the ring right now against the Bulldog. Twisting that arm, and a nice reversal. Bulldogs, boy, I tell you, they are fluid. They are fluid. Well, and, I, uh, I understand they just came back from a tour that they had over in New Zealand. Oh, they were in New yeah. Zealand, they were in Australia, they, they were out in the Orient for a while. Very successful overseas tour, I might, I might add. Tag is made. Nice right. on the Iron Man. Man. You know, I've been on many tours, and I'll tell you something, you pay the price of of being away from home, being away from family, uh, not having the best eating habits over there in different countries, the water and so on and so 
so forth, but you, 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 you're paying a price, but you go over there for a reason, and that is to pick up more wrestling knowledge. No doubt about it. It's part of the dues paying process. Oh, 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 and the crowd chanting to tear it off. Oh, oh, the crowd loves the bulldog, you know, Ricky. Said, I even start to wonder about the fans of today. How is that, Ricky? Well, you just heard the chant. Tear it off, tear it off, tear it off. Well, after seeing the tactics of Baron Samidi and Bob Orton, so. you can understand how the I fans cannot. would be driven to that type of a frenzy. I guess so. I mean, we cannot blame the fans. They're merely a byproduct of what takes place in the ring. I just hope that the wrestlers don't start tearing arms off out there in the ring. Iron Man in pain right now. Bulldog applying the pressure. Oh, nice drive to the midsection. Iron Man firing away, spun him around completely that time. Twist the arm again, making the tag right now with Butch Malone. Malone into the ring. Nice maneuver. Great twist. Bulldogs are built too, Ricky. Yes, they are. The guys in shape. They train regularly. They they wrestle all the time. They I heard they even wrestle each other like two pit bull dogs where they like to fight each other. That's what I heard too, that they have some vicious workouts yeah. with each other. And uh, that I think helps to develop a certain amount of respect for each other. Nice elbow to the side of the head. Butch Malone catching the bulldog coming off the rope. Going for that head. Cutting off the circulation, but the tag is made. The other bulldog coming into the ring. He's in a bad corner right now. Those chops taking their toll. Drive to the midsection. You know the mark of a good tag. Well, that hurts the throat. Sure does hurt the throat. You're going to miss choir yeah. practice after taking a couple of those. Mm -hmm. Pounding away on that throat. Going after the hurt area coming down there with an elbow going for the count of three and uh, barely beating the count of three is Butch Malone you know the making of a very good tag team combination tends to keep their opponent in this side of the ring nice drop kick great work by the American Bulldogs hooking the leg one two Malone kicks out from face lock cutting off that circulation again there Ricky you can do anything to slow your opponent down. Ricky, how can the referee right now, uh, Ronnie West, determine whether that's a choke or not? Well, he's gonna, he, he would try to slide his hand up to me, uh, underneath the arm. Off the rope comes Butch Malone. Uh-oh. Oh! oh. oh. DDT. DDT! Nice maneuver from Butch Malone, and the American Bulldogs may be facing their first loss here. They're in trouble. They are in trouble right now, Mr. Steamboat. Nice leg done. He's got to get over and tag out. He does. Good tag. Must have heard you, Ricky. Oh, got him into that roll. Splitting the groin muscle there. That puts oh. a lot of pain down the middle. Yes, sir. A lot of pain. Cancel those lumbars. What a chop. Nice chop. Must have been taking some lessons from you, my friend. Oh, it's, it's becoming very popular. Seems to be an epidemic. Everybody likes to chop. Well, we've seen how successful it's been for you. You know, they're saying that uh, imitation is the highest form of flattery. And if they've seen you, if they've seen you use it and then be successful with it, uh-oh. Here comes that, that shoulder buster that we've seen, the double, double shoulder. shoulder. And that could be good night, Irene, for Mr. Butch Malone. He hooks the leg, too. No, oh, down. Well, I'll tell you what, you've got to hand it to Malone. Not many people walk away from a shoulder buster, much less a double shoulder buster. I've never seen the hand before. I've never seen the move done before. I mean, never have. That. Never have. Reminiscent of a move that was done by a great Olympian by the name of Bob Roop many Bob years ago. Roop. Bob Roop utilized the shoulder buster all oh, 15 years ago. 15, 16 years ago. Nice maneuver. Tag is made. Butch Malone right now had best tag with the Iron Man. Get out of there and bring in a fresh guy because he's in trouble. Butch Malone is in trouble, but you, you know, the guy's got great stamina. He can take a beating. He's like Timex, baby. Takes a, takes a licking and keeps on ticking. <laughs> Into the corner. Well, that would be a good, a good answer question for him. For the wrestling fans that are viewing and listening right now, what happened to Bob Roop? Bob Roop uh, is retired after suffering a, a severe neck injury and is living in, living in the Miami area right now. Yes. Living in Miami, Florida right now, out of wrestling several years after suffering a severe not only career-threatening, but life-threatening uh, neck injury. Wow. Wow. 
That is reminiscent of what a linebacker does at the goal line, stopping that running back. One, two, three. Needless to say, Butch Malone did not get the touchdown. This victory belongs to the American Bulldogs. I think they're trying to make an impression here. I think they've made an impression here. The American Bulldogs, Ronnie West lifting their hands in victory, throwing the fans that are out here on hand. Butch Malone could not get out of the ring to make the tag. Ricky, let's take a look at this on slow motion instant replay. Describe the action. Tags his partner, throws the opponent off, at the same time grabs the top rope, slingshots his partner into the ring. Boom! Looks like a clothesline forearm across the chest. Going for the cover. The rest is good night. Good night, Irene. The American Bulldogs victorious in the Australian Tag Team match. Don't go away. Coming up next, we're going to be talking to Ivan Koloff and Colt Steele right here on the NAWA. Inundated by letters from angry North Carolinians who were upset at the comments that you, Colt Steele, made saying that you wanted to disassociate yourself with the great state of, of North Carolina. Why ride the steamboat and have coming out trying to worry about me, what I want to do, telling me that I'm not a man from Venice Beach, California. I'll show Steamboat what kind of man I am. Steamboat, don't come out running your mouth about cold steel. I'll show you what I can do. And furthermore, as far as being from North Carolina, those stupid geeks down there, I want to go somewhere and learn how to be a real man. People in South Carolina don't deserve me. You understand that? Well, sir, that, that is, of course, a subject of debate. Uh, obviously, the influence of Ivan Koloff in your life has been uh, really noticeable. Uh, there is a, that, a difference right. in you. There is a difference in you. And, and frankly, a lot of folks are concerned uh, about you turning your that's back right. on your own Anytime thing. Steamboat wants to find out what kind of man I am, just let him get in the ring with him. I'll show him. Russian Bear Koloff. Everybody knows throughout the world there's high-class people and there's low-class people. Only because in North Carolina, in the southern part of the United States, people know what they are. And Coach Steele knows that he's a higher-class man and he chooses to where he wants to live nowadays. There's exciting news happening in North American Association. World Tank, there's going to be tag team tournament. And we're happy to hear this because there's a lot of teams going around saying they are number one, like the Nasty Boys, like Bob Borton Jr. and the big giant of the Baron and this American Bulldog. And I could go on and on and on. There is one way to find out, and that is through a tournament. Who is, it? is number one? And we feel that we are, even though we're a new form team, we're going to prove we are number Well, another form of perestroika and glass nose. Let's turn it over to the ring to Billy Powell. This is another tag team match. And from Raleigh, weighing 230 pounds, here is Jerry Price. His partner from Salisbury, North Carolina, 235 pounds, Gene Ligon. Their opponents from New York City, weighing 600 pounds, a combined weight. These are the Nasty Boys. Knobs and sags, the Nasty Boys, going up against Gene Ligon and Jerry Price, the Carolina Connection. Gene Ligon, uh, oftentimes a partner of mine here in the broadcast booth, Ricky. Very nice guy. Super, Super human being. And they're taking on two hey. of the raunchiest, nastiest people, both in and out of the ring, that I've ever had the displeasure of meeting. You know something, Ted? I, I can... I know the people of the Carolinas can, can associate when I make this statement that these boys are definitely from New York State, New York City. No doubt. No doubt. They have the New York State, New York City attitude. They have the New York State, New York City look. They are obnoxious, overbearing. Ligon with a nice maneuver, powers out of there and avoids the big right from uh, one of the nasties. I tell you, Ligon has seen these guys wrestle before. This is his first time in the ring with them, so he knows exactly what he could be in for tonight, Ligon. So what's the deal with the guy's hand? He uh, suffered an injury uh, a couple of weeks ago, and uh, to show you how tough the guy is, refuses to sit it out. I mean, he's in there with a broken finger and still wreaking havoc on opponents. You gotta give him that much. No, you do, you gotta give him that much. I mean, these guys don't call in sick to work, I'll tell you. Hey, I don't like ropes. Oh. Nice maneuver by Gene Logan. Block it, block it. Good. Nice. Good. Nice. Go, coach. That 
Ross, my partner, Gene Reagan. All right, showing some stuff tonight. See, if I were a Little League daddy, I'd be saying, that's my boy. Ligon is a cagey veteran, a great wrestler with a great amateur background, Ricky. Tag is made. Nasty boys work great as a team, Rick. Ooh, that hurt the shoulder. Working on that neck right now. Oh, oh. neck breaker. Man, that'll oh. jar the brain. Tell me about it. Yes, sir. That will certainly make you aware of the fact that you are in pain. A nice headbutt to the stomach, to the midsection. He's got Ligon up for a body slam. Tag is made. The nasty boys. And that is what you call a royal pain in the backside. I don't know who's who in the nasty boys, but that particular move, he telegraphed the two and Gene moved out of the way. No doubt Jerry Price in and out of the ring. And the referee, Byron George, talking to Byron. Turn around. Turn around, Byron. Firing away. I'll tell you what, Jerry Price took a licking outside of the ring. Oh. Byron Richard trying to restore order right now. Ligon, uh, while Ligon is being tossed out of the ring by Byron Richard, the Nasty Boys have double teamed Jerry Price and continue to administer punishment in that corner. Boom! Double slam into the turnbuckle. You know, Texas, for what we have seen with the, with the guys that are involved in this up-and-coming tag team tournament, the Bulldogs, the Nasty Boys, Samidi and Orton, competition is going to be tough. It is going to be tough from the top. Oh, 300 pounds. pounds on that midsection. Two and three. Uh, belongs to the nasty. These guys are tough. They're nasty. They are nasty. Spinning on his opponent after pinning him. Let's, let's tell you right now that they are nasty, mean, and a pretty good little tag team combination. Yes, and slow motion instant replay. Let's look at it, Ricky. Big power slam. Boom. 300 plus, plus pounds. I guess the combination is 600 pounds or better. No doubt about it. Here comes the other one off the top rope. Elbow. Blam right there. You talk about crushing some uh, ribs and knocking the wind out of you. Look, at the, look, at, the, look at the hand across the mouth. That's not just pinning a guy, and it's humiliating. humiliating him. Yes, sir. Coming up next, Bo Reagan, Vince Torelli, and Sam Houston in a six-man match, taking on Dan Grundy and the Ring Lord, Speedy Gonzalez and Rick Slaggy. Don't go away. This is the NAWA. A six-man tag team match. Six-man tag team match with Dan Grundy from Greensboro, North Carolina, 275 pounds. with a combined weight of 500 pounds from Chicago, the Ring Lords. The other three men from Manning, South Carolina, 235 pounds, Bo Reagan. And from San Diego, California, 235 pounds, see a lot of energy here. Bo Reagan, Vince Torelli, Sam Houston. This is one heck of a combination. One tremendous combination. They're going to be taking on the ring lords, Speedy Gonzalez and Rick Slagy, along with Big Dan Grundy. And into the ring first is going to be Bo Reagan. Bo Reagan in the ring first, and we don't know who's going to be in the ring. It looks like, uh, well, <laughs> the ring lords, all of them are in the ring at the same time here. Ron West is going to have a heck of a time trying to keep order. Ricky, I've always said for these type of matches, they need two referees. Exactly. When you've got any more than, than four guys, and you know, like in a regular tag team uh, uh, setup, you need two referees. 
This could very well turn into a mini battle royal. All the guys in the ring, and then it could just break loose. No doubt about it. Into the ring is Speedy Gonzalez along with Bo Reagan. Reagan going over to the corner there. Gonzalez trying to extricate himself, failing to do so, but reaching the turnbuckles, and the referee Ron West calls for the break. Well, Gonzalez is one, uh, down on one knee, one of the ring lords, against Bo Reagan, and Bo knows wrestling, Rick. I've looked at this guy's track record. It's very impressive. Great amateur career. Great amateur career. Fine outstanding amateur wrestler in the state of New York before coming to North Carolina. You know something, Ted? There's a lot of old pros, and they might, you know, have an advantage over you. If it comes down to some amateur wrestling every once in a while, it does not hurt to know something. Certainly doesn't. Gonzalez reaching the uh, rings. Apron, and uh, well, actually wisely getting out of the, uh, out of the maneuver. Collar and elbow has a headlock on Bo Reagan right now. Bo Reagan, one of the upcoming stars of the North American Wrestling Association. Ted Webb along with Ricky the Dragon Steamboat here at ringside. Into the ropes. Nice shoulder. Powers out. Nice Whoa. maneuver by Reagan. Another Whoa. nice maneuver. Let's see, this is going to end up in some... Oh, nice. Nice knee to the face. That was a knee to the face. That was, and a nice souffle. Reagan landing on the back of his head, could be hurt. Tag has made the other ring lord, Rick Slagy, into the ring now. Coming down, full tilt boogie on the lower back of Reagan, picks him up for a full body slam. Boom! Off the ropes, Reagan moves. Slagy lands on that elbow, and the tag is made with Sam Houston. Boom! The bionic elbow to the top of the head, a nice twist. Applying the pressure. Now, this guy's a little, bundle of energy. Right, a little nostalgia for you, Ted. Who is Sam Houston's father? Who is Sam Houston's father? He comes from a wrestling family also. Tell me who Sam Houston's father is. Grizzly Smith. No kidding. Yes, sir. I love it. These second-generation grapplers are something to behold. Oh, yeah. Who was his brother? Oh. Ah, Jake the Snake Roberts. Little wrestling trivia here. That's right. What do I win? <laughs> <laughs> Sam Houston in the ring against Speedy Gonzalez. Yeah, do it, it, moms and pops. Thank you, my friend. Okay, I'll take it. Testing each other for leverage and balance. Nice arm drag takedown. Trying to charge again. This time it's reverse. Houston with an arm drag takedown. And yet another one. Another arm drag takedown. And now we've got a little brewing here. Everybody wants a piece of action. Oh, boy, here we go. <laughs> I tell you what, he just cleared the ring single-handedly. He just cleared the ring single-handedly. Boy, that guy worked like an old XL vacuum cleaner and got all that scum out of the ring. That's true, too. You know, if I was Sam Houston, you know what I'd do right now? What's that? Tag out and get a breather? Yeah, I would, too. I would, too. Get a couple of good boys there back, and Vince Torelli especially. Hey, I'd go down any dark alley if I had a couple of those guys with me. Sure. No doubt about it. The good hands people, you know? Here comes the big fella. Yeah. Looks like about 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, big guy. Mm -hmm. Sam Houston makes the tag with Vince Torelli. Torelli into the ring, firing away. You know, this is a good-looking Italian wrestler who just signed a movie contract. He's going to be appearing in a movie with Jim Belushi that they're going to be filming in North Carolina. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? Hollywood come knocking. Torelli with a great amateur background under the tutelage of Paul Jones. Applying the pressure right now. And see what's happening, see what's happening here? The referee's got his hands full. I told, I told you at the beginning of the match, this is no job for one guy, and Ron West is one of the best referees in America, but this may be asking too much for one guy to really Caught coming off those... Into the ring, Rick Slagy. Side duplex. I've seen Torelli uh, give a lot of those. Yes, he has. Yes, he has. Got a little bit out of his own playbook. Well, great sunset. Got him over, trying hook to hook the arms. arms. Hook the arms. Got to hook those arms. He was able to hang on to the ropes and kick out of that. Up for a body slam. Full body slam. Slaggy going for the cover, kicking out. It's Vince Torelli. Torelli into the ropes. If he'd have been punting, that one would have been high end over in 48 yards downfield. Tag out. Torelli making the 
the tag. Sam Houston into the ring against Grundy. Firing away into the ropes. Boom, another right. Houston now bringing him over to his corner. Reversal by Grundy. Tag is made. Boom! Is he the legal man in the ring? No, he's not. He made a tag. Made the tag. Now we've got all six wrestlers into the Turn ring. Into a mini battle royal. No deal. A four six ball. And Ron Wurtz is just looking, but look who's on top. This is like a machine. Throw them all together. Go ahead, guys. Oh. All right. All right. I can tell you. this maneuver on the instant replay slow motion machine. Give us, give us a description, Rick. Well, we've got all six men in the ring. Hound and whale in the way. Throw them all together, go right ahead. Let's we'll see if they do a dosey though. No, they just all collide. It's amazing to me that Vince Torelli finds the legal man, Grundy, belly the back suit player. Beautiful. Boom. Around the world we go and it's all over. He hooks the leg and it is all over. The winners of this match, Bo Reagan, Vince Torelli, and Hans Sam Houston. When we bounce back, we're going to be talking to Chris War Eagle, Chavis, and also the American Bulldogs right here on the North American Wrestling Association. No